Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we are going to take this stepside pickup truck you see behind me here, the Buckle Bull Ride, and turn it into the most 90s lifted teal pickup truck you've ever seen. Now this is one of my favorite creations in the game that I've made. Of course it is very utilitarian, it doesn't have anything more than it should, yet it has all the bells and whistles of the full size truck. But this also comes with the recent release of the Mudrunner game, and I thought back, my favorite truck in that game was the Chevy CK1500 Stepside, and I'm just a sucker for these old square body style trucks. Of course, this color, if any of you guys recognize, it's a very popular color on the 80s pickup trucks, and I've made it be modern of course but it is a homage to the 80s one and now we are going to make it into the 90s one first things first just because that is the most important thing to get started off is we need that right color of teal that you see on these 90s step side pickup trucks that's too bright something along these lines maybe a smidgen lighter and then of course we need the white stripe down the side for that i'm just going to take a very subtle shade of kind of yellow that's pretty good we're going to spawn it in the game and just make sure that it has the right vibes more or less i think i may fine tune the color but that's kind of where i'm heading with this and then of course all these have to be adjusted and that just goes without saying and with that, I also have to adjust the back, which I'm going to do in a second here. This bit here, around there, and back here. Now that should be actually white. And I've done enough of these to kind of have a fairly good system in place. But there is the base of it. Now that is another dark color down there realistically I should either take a darker gray and put it or just keep the teal we could either go with that or the teal the teal makes it look a little more 90s I'd even say and what better for the 90s as well than a very wide style flare like that now I don't like this end here but I'm just gonna go ahead and put it like that and that actually upon looking at a photo of one of these trucks i think i'd actually prefer something different i'm going to remove all of this opening that up and then let's just use this dark color for now we'll make the step look like this and then i'm going to go ahead and paint it so if any of you search up what a 90s step side ck 1500 looks some of them have this sort of plastic molding that you see there it makes it look a little sportier i guess also the front has to be painted and this part here as well i believe actually the lights i normally leave black so it looks like that and around the lights as well we'll quickly do that in the grill now this is all just cosmetic and hopefully it's more like a meditation for you to watch me build this. If not, this probably is not the video for you. Um, but the next thing we're going to now do is lift it up because I want this thing to be a little bigger on bigger wheels and a little higher. Also, these 90s trucks were famous for their chrome. Of course, that's just the style back then. So I will throw on a chrome bumper rather than what we currently have. I do have something that I kind of use for showcasing chrome. It's a very light blue. And I'm gonna go ahead and match that in there. Now realistically that should probably stay the color of the body and that should stay like that. So that'd be the chrome bumper if we decide to do this and then the back would also be matching. Now there's different trims that had different features. Uh, of course, the Z71 had more 
chrome, I believe, and then some other ones had less, so we could just kind of see how that works. To be honest, I'm a fan more of the plain blue, so we'll just go back to how we had it. It just looks a little sharper in my opinion. Anyways, now we said we wanted to lift it. So, to lift it up, first I'm just going to extract the existing wheels off it, and that's going to make it the easiest to retrofit any type of um, connection in along with these existing wheels. All the logic will just stay rather than deleting it. Except now, we of course have a problem. There is a lot of stuff that came off with these wheels that we need to put back. And simply we'll just make it one block smaller like this. And all that stuff can easily go right back into the truck. Just like this. Now we took it off in several goes, so there, there you have it. Anyways, that is definitely not how tall it's going to be. It's just going to have a slight lift, but it's going to have the bigger wheels. Honestly, it may not even need a lift if I just go ahead and put the larger wheels inside here. For example, if I go to wheel and take the 5x5s, let's see if it fits physically in here. It does physically fit. Obviously, we have to make it a little more pushed in. It's not going to stay out like this. That looks ridiculous. But that is the gist. And especially if we make it smaller here, maybe a little bit larger like that, and push out the suspension, then it'll appear to be lifted without physically being one block lower. Now, the trick will come with making sure that I don't accidentally... Um, well, don't remove anything important in here, or vital, but of course this has to get rejigged. We have to now have a system that bends this piece and bends it like that. And then this is where the T-junction will be. And this is where we'll have the wheels attached from. Now, I'm sure a ton of this stuff is going to start to show red once I try to put this wheel in here. And that's no surprise well actually only one thing and it's this one so i can go ahead and delete that and then it fits and then on this side same thing only this one so i could even make it symmetrical if i want I'm not quite sure oh the wheel sideways that will do it so we'll go back to the wheel and take it on its upright axis like this and try to install it so now it's hitting above it that makes more sense we can clear out that weighted block and that weighted block and then it fits so that's already looking better of course the wheels are extra sized if I make them smaller then you end up with a nice kind of spaced look I really like this look my actual car has spacers on the wheels maybe not that much but a little bit of a spaced look makes the wheels look fatter well they physically are um and then we'll deal with the suspension after but here is going to be a bit tricky because as you can see there's a ton of microcontrollers in the way there's the exhaust pipe so there may have to be some more intricate work required there but what i will do right now is just attach the relevant things onto the wheels so this goes on this one for the steering variable brake goes on both of them and then the other side steering is there left wheel steering and of course the handbrake with that in place i can remove these ones and i definitely need these rims to be chrome so i'm going to go ahead and put a nice chrome look that's too white we need like we need to start with this gray I think and kind of make it a little more blue from there that will do it and then this one as well for sure to match and now this is where I can play around with the suspension so 100% both things you can see how it's gonna behave it pushes it up a little higher on that side than this side so we may have to fiddle around with that a little bit anyways that is a decent look i do think we can actually opt for one size larger on the tires and i'll see how this these settings work right now but let's just go with 185 just to kind of get it 
looking how we want it to. Honestly, that's okay. That's a good look for me. So now it'll be the back. The back is trickier and I'm just going to remove these out of the way and give us a little more playroom here. Okay, first things first. Currently in here, my exhaust actually flows through my power, which I showed in another video. There's a reason for that, but I will have to actually merge these up now and have them flow through a T-junction and kind of go together through here, which end of the day won't actually do anything. That'll be totally fine. And then we can go ahead and put this one here. So that'll be the same thing. The issue is going to come with that there. I think that's going to intersect with some things and these microcontrollers here. So we have to determine exactly how much space we need for these wheels. Uh, what I do know is that as long as they're orientated in the right direction and I have the right one selected, you'll see that it actually does require a decent amount for that suspension. Ah, in this case, only one block. Interesting. And that one block is, in my truck bed, the fire extinguisher. But, if I can apply it again, and just make sure the orientation is correct. How was this? Because now it works. In here, we may have to do some adjustments. But that is okay. That's actually minimal damage. Okay, so let's go and put that there. And I know I'm just putting in the wheels right now. And you guys know that I messed up in my car tutorial video. Where now they are aimed at the different directions. I'm going to fix that later. But let's just make this functional right now. Oh, that was no problem at all. Okay, simple fix for this. I'm just going to cover it up. And simple fix for this. So that actually ended up being pretty okay. Here we can increase the tire size as needed. And keep some of the similar sort of suspension bits if we want. But let's spawn it up and see what it looks like. So the front obviously rides a little higher. We could get away with bigger wheels to be honest. Even though I do like the look of that. I think that that's the right amount. And I did notice a painting issue here on the front. So let me just correct that real quick. Anyways, now with that done, and these wheels in place, 185 seems to be a number I'm going to try at first. Of course, this will come down to the actual road test, because if I uh, find that the handling is terrible, then we're going to have to do some, some extra work. Okay, but that is in. And then the last thing is to connect these wheels up. Now the issue, remember what I just said, is that now this does not work nicely. We're better off actually having selected the symmetrical tool than instead of random, um, like placing it in opposition. So now that would work a little better. And same type of thing here actually. This will also have to be placed like that. And of course now I deleted this, but it's quite easy. Left wheel, right wheel, and then the variable brake, which we know is here. So I can actually apply these to all the wheels. Variable, 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 and variable. And then the handbrake goes on all of them as well. And that's actually very nice and close in the center there. We don't need these ones anymore. And I want to make these chrome as well. So we'll take this make it a little bit of a bluey tint and paint it like that. Now these are large wheels. That actually looks kind of cool. Now the gearing is going to be all messed up for this because these gears are meant for the smaller wheels and the smaller wheels have a different amount of um, power to them. So I may have to adjust the gear ratios a little bit. Though it does seem to handle itself pretty nice. And I know people may comment that these wheels look ridiculous and too large, but you should see some of the trucks we have here in Alberta. There's people that drive much larger wheels than this. I would like to see, however, maybe one size smaller just so it doesn't look that out of place. Oh, I didn't even reduce the size. Well, that's going to explain it. 
I thought I had him already at 50, and I was thinking of going down to 25. This should look more natural. Perfect. For a step side pickup truck, that looks way more natural. Oh, that's, this is perfect. This looks like one of the trucks I actually saw today that, I, that inspired me on this video. Now that power issue has to be resolved, so that's one thing. And if any of you follow my vehicle lore, you'll know that the X99 is kind of like my off-road trim. Now this one does have a full lift kit that you could see it's actually elevated up whereas this one doesn't have as much of a lift kit it just has the bigger wheels but even still I do want to take this X99 grill and put it on here so that's start the starting point and then obviously make these lights turn on when the ignition's activated and connect it to the power for the vehicle so that's just a nice little touch. Now the coloring of this has to be fixed. That's not a big deal. Now I know I could have made like a retro style trim instead of this, putting making it an X99, but I think as an X99, it actually kind of fits the image that the X99 kind of goes for. So I'm happy to make it that. And then I just want to paint the color of this because the previous one was brown because the truck was brown. I'm just going to make it be all black. Looks a little sharper there. Cool. Down there also has to be adjusted. Okay. That's actually looking pretty cool. The next thing I'll want to take from that other truck is the transmission. So we have to see exactly how we lined this transmission and make it match on this one because I did a decent amount of testing. So we got two to one on the first one. We'll make it two to one over here. And what you'll notice is with this change of power, it should end up driving a bit better. So five, two, three, two. So we find five, two and three, two. There we go. Next one up one to one and nine to five. Interesting enough, that was my reverse gear, whereas here it wasn't. So my next one was my reverse gear. And then I go into the rest of them. So it's not quite the same setup. I have three and three. Oh, it should be. Very interesting. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, I skipped ahead. Okay. So this one should be one to one. This is negative one, sure. Six to five. So we'll find our six to five ratio. And then last but not least, another six to five. So that should make it drive a little better. Obviously it's not gonna have the same acceleration as the version without it, but it should be okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I do love how this looks. Now, if any of you know these 90s pickup trucks, they have a red or burgundy cloth interior. So I'm going to do that here just because that is kind of the most sought after combination for these older trucks. And it kind of matches with the X99 look because in addition to that, I am going to actually take this colored door panel and put that in ours here. Whereas previously it was the buckle blue. Now it looks a little sharper and that is purely intentional let's see if first before I do that I'm just gonna take and take this um, indicator it'll be e it's easier to find it while I have one to sample from rather than having to invent the wheel and go searching for it so I always try to sample where I can and then throw that in so that is good and and then the next thing will be the actual dashboard itself has to be changed. But first, let's make sure that this color scheme is corrected in both cases. Sweet. I went ahead and completed the instrument panel. Now it's all red. This is red. The mood lights are red and the glowing light under the truck, which will illuminate the cabin, is also red. So this X99 theme seemed to work quite well with this truck. And of course matches the 
red seats inside. So I do love how this is all looking. And now I did a little bit more research on what exactly makes a 90s and 80s pickup truck special and different from today. Obviously the chrome bumpers, chrome grills, we got that covered on the front. The angular boxy design, that's good. We have, you know, the chrome wheels, that's good. Bench seat, we can't really do because we're kind of stuck with this configuration. Um, I know I could remove this seat and put like uh, two of those singles and then you can kind of have a three person cab. Maybe I'll do that actually, that'd be kind of cool. So with that, I will have to move the, trans the uh, parking brake, put that up there. And then we'll paint this here and here, not paint you. Now this is the transfer case that I have, but honestly the transfer case doesn't really do much of anything because realistically this whole um, clutch, it just makes it more difficult to drive when it's on. So it doesn't even need to have the transfer case. And then what we could put in here instead of the transfer case is a nice old bench seat. And to do that, we'll just put it like this. And then I'll grab the seats. Because that was the, kind of the cool thing with these old trucks is three people can sit up in the cab. So that is going to be a neat little feature that isn't very uh, common here. Now what we could do is take an empty microcontroller. And then we'll make it the right size to fit into this area. I think that'll create a nicer looking seat than if it's a uh, than if it's just um, a slanted slope piece. I know some people do stuff like this and I think that it does look kind of nice. Truth be told I guess it could also just be out of one um, or out of two pieces but I do think that it does make it a little more bench like if it's continuous like this. So there we have it we've got our bench seat inside Next, I want to have sort of bed mounted lights and bed mounted um, a bar. Now something like this, obviously not in this color. For the color, we can actually go to our rims and grab the chrome one. And I'll make it come all the way up to here. Where I want this part to then be attached as well as go across. So what we'll have here is one of these intricate pipe pieces just like this this one will be attached to there and this one goes across and then the lights can actually go above just like this now of course if i was using modded pieces this would look a little nicer because it would be slanted but just using kind of what i have that is good enough now one thing that i do want is to make these yellow if any of you are familiar with kc lights that's kind of what i'm going for the kc light look and what i'll do is i'll put it on the third hotkey and i believe i already marked it up here roof rack lights so roof rack lights are on and connected to the power and on the underside of the truck i actually went ahead and added my gimbal pivot aim and it's going to cause the lights to sort of shine a little bit. Oh, here it is. It's going to cause the lights to shine on opposite sides. So it kind of like our trail lights. So if you're ever driving at nighttime, you can turn these on if you're going through a trail and it'll illuminate the sides. You can kind of see the middle isn't getting illuminated. The middle is for your regular headlights. But this part here is to get your trail going. So I do like that. And I know, yes, this could be one little block lower, something like this, but I think that then you'd, you wouldn't see these, um, you wouldn't see this chrome rack. So I, I kind of think that this makes it a little more special, a little more visual. On second thought, I actually like how this looks more on the side. Clearly, if you're from any angle other than the front, you could see the rack, and if you're on the front, then you don't see the rack, but that is A-OK. -okay. I think it's just a, a cleaner solution. And now what I want to do is test it out at nighttime. And we'll even turn on our mood lights. We'll get that red glow going. So if we press 3, 
it definitely illuminates around us. So the idea is it'll illuminate your trail, just like that. So you're driving and now it kind of illuminates a good portion of space all around. I really do like how this is coming together, I gotta say. I think we're nearing the end. A cool look would actually be a cowl hood on the front, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna hit into my pivots when I try to open it. So that's not gonna make it very functional and therefore we can't have it but that is kind of a neat look for a very modded type of truck actually definitely is looking <laughs> quite cool but i think when i press this it'll start to yeah it freaks out maybe i could reduce the amount that it opens and that may be able to stop it from going haywire here if I just reduce this pivot to like say 0.4. If 0.4 doesn't work then we can't do it because if point, 0.4 is still going to give us a good amount of access into our engine bay. If it still goes crazy, yeah, see. So we have to do something less and then at that point I think it'll just end up being too much um, not open enough. Also one thing I did notice is I didn't quite paint this part and this part. Well here, one last final try. Let's just put, wait, did I put 0.7? Uh-oh. Hmm. Could have sworn I put three. Oh, that's for the door. That's for something else. No, I put four. Let's try it with three, just for the sake of the cowl hood, because I do like the overall look of this a lot. Okay, three works. Does three let us fix the engine if need be? I guess it should. And you could still plug in the cable anchor. All right. I could I could roll with this. The last thing I want to do, other than painting the back of this black, so it kind of looks like an intake for the air coming out, is I want to put a spare tire somewhere in the back of this thing. And the reason why is because that spare tire will just definitely add that 90s feel and it'll look just um a li little more off-roady now we're gonna put a three by three we don't have to put an actual um five by five a three by three will suffice and if we put it here like this and then increase the size a little bit that is probably good enough now yes you're gonna have a little trouble accessing your health back there but i think that it just looks really cool and I'm gonna go ahead and take the paint from the wheel throw it onto the rim as well and you don't see it through well kind of see it through but that's because we're missing a block here if I put this block and then just paint it you can't even see it and you see the wheel sticking over which is kind of what I wanted to do I want to have the wheel protruding a little bit like when you look at it from the side view I mean we could even just shove it to the full size and then that one health is blocked, but by, because we're blocking a health, we're going to put two new health right here. And then just make sure the wheel wells are all painted uniformly this dark color on both sides, because I did some playing around there. And there we have it. We've just created an awesome looking 90s pickup truck for all of you out there nostalgic for this type of thing like I am. I hope that this uh, pickup truck suits your intentions and kind of your style. And maybe if you can't have one in real life, at least you could have one here in the game to play around with and drive around and utilize. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a very simple video of me doing very simple things, but the idea is to kind of get you involved in my build and my thought process and to kind of see how things are made here in Stormworks. So thank you for watching, stay tuned for more content, stay tuned for more creations, and as always, happy Stormworksing everyone.